If you're wondering why I'm dressed up like this, well, it's very simple. We're heading to a funeral because in this episode of My Hero Academia, we get a very major and impactful death. And in this video, I'm here to break it down. So let's do that. But first, right after this. Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Monkman Drew, and I'm here to do my breakdown for My Hero Academia, episode three of season six. And in this episode, there is a fair amount that we need to break down with some important changes, not only to the ending, but also some important changes to the story and some added scenes that really adds to what happens in this chapter. So let's dive right into this breakdown and talk about what happened in this episode. For starters, this episode called One's Justice actually adapts three chapters from the manga, which are chapters 264, 265, and 266, as well as it adapts the final page of 263. And so to start off, the episode starts with once again a new scene of the police officers once again participating and helping to coordinate the activities of the heroes in this raid. As well as we get to get a better understanding of the entrances and how these entrances were destroyed that led to the underground basement area of the villa. And I'm not sure if I've said this, and I'm pretty sure I have, but I really just enjoy these added scenes with the police officers because it gives this raid a little bit more weight and a little bit more practicality and a little bit more feasibility and a little bit more realism because it just makes sense for the heroes to be highly coordinated with the police department which is a callback to the first time we've seen heroes raid an actual villain hideout in the Overhark or the Eight Precepts arc. So it just shows continuity within the story of My Hero Academia and shows pretty much the realism of something like this occurring and how it would most likely have occurred in our real world. And from there, we actually get to something that is different between the manga and the anime, and it's just a slight difference. Because during the scene with Kaminari, in the manga, we see Kaminari has more of a goofier expression on his face, while in the anime, he still is very much stoic and serious, which is not that big of a change, but it just shows the differences between the manga and the anime. As well as we get some great scenes from Midnight, Edshot, Kamuyu Woods, as well as Mudman and Shimage. And the highlight of this portion of the episode probably comes from how well Midnight is animated in this scene with her moving and jumping around while also using her quirk to immobilize and knock the people out. And there's something here with Edshot that I'm going to bring up a little bit later, but it primarily pertains to how certain still images are used in this episode, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But from seeing the heroes and their attacks on the villains in this raid, we actually cut over to the scene that was actually skipped last episode in chapter 263 of the manga where we get to see that Hawks has a confrontation with Twice, and this leads Twice to pretty much being regretful for allowing for Hawks to get close to him, and how he feels guilt and remorse for, once again, causing the heroes or causing an accident that could horribly hurt the villains, the people that Twice cares about. And so from here, we do get some added scenes of Skeptic in the room monitoring Hawks, as well as we get a better understanding of what Hawks was doing to his feathers in the manga, we see that he was able to destroy the cameras on his feathers, which are able to prevent Skeptic from learning any more information while Hawks is flying around or any more new information that Hawks may gain after this raid has concluded. So it's just a point of clarity, but something else that we get in this episode is the amount of flashbacks which are actually concurrent with what is seen in the manga. And the only type of flashback that is cut from the anime that is seen in the manga is a small panel of the boss of Twice. But in the anime, that scene is actually substituted with a flashback that we actually see during Twice's initial flashback during the Paranormal Liberation Front versus the League of Villains. So there is that, and also a little small thing that I noticed is that when it comes to the transition between the scenes with Hawks and going between seeing more scenes with the heroes, they use the same frames of animation to indicate a transition. The only difference is for the second transition, it is only cut by a few seconds, so you may not have noticed it upon first watching, but I definitely did. 
As well as we do get a panel that is cut from the anime that is seen with the manga of us seeing Dobby going towards we're assuming to be the location of Twice and Hawks, which is seen in the manga, but not necessarily in the anime. But that cut was most likely needed to be a bigger surprise for when Dobby finally attacks Hawks later on in the episode. And from there, we do get a few cool moments of Tamaki as well as Tokoyami and Fat Gum doing some very cool action that is very reminiscent of the manga. And here's where I want to talk more about the still images or the still panels in this episode. And pretty much what those are, just simple images or panels that I'm probably going to show you right now, which doesn't have that much animation to it, or if the animation that they have is very slight and minute. And when it comes to these still animations and still panels, I personally am okay with them, especially if they are used effectively in the episode. Because in this episode, I do think that they are used effectively when it comes to the still panels and the still frames where they do not linger that much on the screen for you to heavily notice them, or that they do have a little bit of animation that makes it seem as if these panels are in motion, even though they aren't. And many of these still images and still panels are used effectively in the fight between Hawks as well as with Twice. And let me just say that the episode does this fight justice. We can really understand and grasp the emotions that both of these characters are feeling in this moment and how Twice is angry at Hawks for the things that he's doing and hurting his friends, while Hawks is just very broken up on the idea of having to potentially harm twice and how he really does feel remorse and really does care for him even though he is a villain and does want to give him a second chance. And something else I want to bring up is how the anime animates Hawks' feathers cutting and moving through Twice's clone and how they move so fast that they appear as if they are lasers just cutting through these characters. So I think that that was a very cool way for the anime to show how fast Hawk's feathers are moving and how Twice cannot really perceive them that well. But then we get this fight going from Hawks versus Twice to Twice and Dobby versus Hawks, where we get Dobby using a very powerful flame to hit Hawks with a lot of firepower, which shows that he is at a disadvantage against a fire user like Dobby. And the interactions and the animation between Dobby and Twice in this episode is amazing and I enjoyed it so much. And something else that I want to bring up is the added scenes that we get in the anime that we do not see in the manga involving Hawks. Because in the manga, we see that Dobby fires attack at Hawks. And as Dobby is trying to attack Hawks and Twice is trying to escape, Hawks is able to circle around the building and appear right in front of Twice. In the manga, we are told how this happens and we do get a small hint to how he was able to do it. But in the anime, we explicitly see how Hawks was able to circle around the building and because the building is open, it allowed him to get to that area fast. So it's cool that we actually get to see that, not necessarily in motion, but to get to see how it actually happened. And then we also get another added change in this exact same moment. Because as Twice is trying to escape, in the manga, we see that there is an attack being aimed at Twice, and we get to see the attack actually go through a little bit more clearly. But in the anime, we don't necessarily get that. And what we get is Twice trying to use his double to escape, but then we pan up to Hawks appearing in the flames about to stab Twice. And in this moment, it's very shocking because in this moment, Hawks appears to be very much like a monster or a serial killer about to take the life of their prey. And also something I would like to add is how the anime portrays Twice's clone falling off the banister and how it is a little bit more subtle, but a little bit more clearer in the anime, which is different in comparison to the manga. If you aren't looking for it, you may not notice twice falling from the banister. So it's cool that that is something that you can actually notice in the anime if you missed it in the manga. And now we're getting to that part of the episode. And if you know, you know, and if you don't, well, like I said, there's a reasoning why I'm wearing this funeral attire because we get a scene of a character with snakes coming out of their hands, capturing both Toga and Mr. Compress. And in this scene, we get a better and clearer understanding of what happens at this moment as Twice cuts open the hero's head and continues to stab him viciously in this moment. Something that is seen in the manga, but isn't very explicitly clarified in that medium. And as this is happening, this is the moment where it's finally revealed that the clone that fell from the banister 
took a fair amount of damage and it's heavily implied that he is the last clone and that twice is dead. And this is portrayed by many different aspects of this episode, but what really sells it that this is potentially the death of twice is the music used in this scene. I won't be able to do it in this video most likely, but let me just say that this music makes this scene hit so much harder, even to the point of making me almost tear up and cry for how good this scene is done in the anime. Because you have the speaking, how the characters are emoting, how the characters are reacting, the music, Music, all accumulating and combining into this moment with also the added scene of seeing Twice's bloody body on the ground leaking blood and blood dripping from the banister more or less confirming that he has been killed and most likely by Hawks. And as this is all happening and as Twice is giving his last speech in front of Toga and is able to give his last words to her as Toga is gripping and the clone body begins to disappear, we have a fantastic transition to the end credits as Twice's Double's body falls to the ground in its bloody mess and as it covers the camera in a dark black blob, we cut and transition into the ending, ending the episode. And that isn't the last change that we have in this episode because there is also a change in the ending. And the change comes from the moment where we see both Twice and Toga being happy. In the original animation of the ending, we get a scene of a freed and living Shigaraki over a destroyed area, foreshadowing what's to be coming within the next few episodes. But in this episode, after that scene of them holding hands, we actually get to see another scene of her wrapping up Twice's head to make him whole followed by Toga crying at the fact that Twice is dead. And I noticed this on my first go, but it didn't register until I saw it online and then saw it a second time. So yeah, this is something that isn't very common for My Hero Academia to change the opening or ending as the series progresses, which is giving me a little bit more hope for what's to come in the next few chapters, particularly when it comes to other characters that we see in the OP and how they may change and other characters in the ending that could also be changed. But yeah, that's pretty much my entire breakdown of this episode of My Hero Academia Season 6, Episode 3. So, what did you think of the episode? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Did it make you cry? Leave your thoughts down in the comments down below on what you thought of the episode and why not leave a like on the video to show that you want to see more breakdowns like this in the near future. So subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this, do all that cool jazz, and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>